Welcome to Palletizing and Storage. This activity is going to give us the opportunity to use a lot of the skills that we've used and just a few new ones. First, let's go ahead and quickly put the cell together. We're going to use the same robot that we've used. We're going to grab a table, make that 1000 by 1000. I'll go ahead and turn on the robot's work envelope. And I'll move the table under the robot. Next thing we need is to go ahead and put in a feeder. It's really the first time that we've had the opportunity to use some outputs. So I'm going to come to storage devices and grab the feeder. In the feeder I'm going to go ahead and put 10 parts. I'm going to skip the inputs tab right now for this activity we're not going to use it. I'm going to go straight to the outputs tab. This is really the important part of this. I'm going to grab the feeder and pull it all the way up to output 1. So now when the robot sends a signal out on output 1, the feeder will push a new part out. Say OK. And place the feeder somewhere. If at any point in time you need to change those inputs and outputs, up here at the top you have the inputs and outputs wiring. So I can click on this diagram and it will give me the opportunity to go back to any of those types of things to set them up. So, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and rotate positive 90 degrees. I'm going to change its position to 255 and negative 200. Now, the one big thing that usually trips us up is getting the block actually in the feeder. So I want to go ahead and come to my material, and we're going to select a cylinder. For this activity, we don't have to adore, we don't have to deal with roll angles, so a cylinder is going to be very easy to use. So in the cylinder, we'll leave everything alone. I'll say OK. And I want to make sure I place it somewhere on the white piece. That will actually establish the correct Z value for us. I can then double click the cylinder and change its position to 255, 200. What you're going to see is it places it right on that little gray square. That gray square is what teaches the feeder the object that's supposed to go into it. And that's all we need for cell setup. So we'll go ahead and save and put that in our folder. And I'll be right back into RoboCell. Now that we're in RoboCell, we'll go ahead and bring in the cell, just as we have been bringing it in. I'll go ahead and reset my windows. And um, I'm not that unhappy with that view. We'll leave it alone. So before we really start this activity, I think it's going to be advantageous for me to go ahead and show you what the activity is specifically going to look like. In this activity, the robot's going to take pieces from a feeder. It's going to use a lot of common positions to create an array of blocks in a layer. Once it's finished with the first layer, it's going to reproduce that same pattern in a second layer. As you can see from the diagram on the top, we have some shared positions, the 30 through 33. What the robot needs to do is understand each one of the layers and know when it's completed an entire process. From the chart shown, you can see we have a lot of positions. Don't worry about all those positions because the majority of them are going to be relative. You can see our table level, 20 through 23, are absolute taut positions. Make sure you include the negative 90 as your pitch. 24 through 27 are going to be relative to those positions, up 40 on the Z. Everything else remains the same. 30 through 33 will be relative to those same positions, up 90, just to give us an extra 10 in between the blocks. You can now see that we have a recorded home position of 99. We have an absolute taut position for 100. The positions are shown. And then we have our normal send robot to object for position 1, or our at pick. And we'll use a relative to that for position 11, up 60 on the Z. I want to show you how to get just a couple of the positions. One of the first things we need to do is come up to view dialog bars and turn on our digital outputs. Our digital outputs are going to populate down here and allow us to control the actual outputs without programming it. So output 1 is what we control or what we control the feeder with. So as soon as I push 1, I should see a little cylinder populate. If you're already seeing a cylinder here in one way or another, something went wrong in cell setup, we're going to have to fix that. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and open my robot's gripper. Because these are cylinders, I don't have to worry about the roll, and I'll be able to use this send robot to object. 
As soon as I click that object, I can come down here and I can pick the cylinder and I'll automatically jump straight down to it so that I can record my position one. So position one is an absolute position and it's recorded. Position 11 will be relative to position one up in the air. So I'm gonna clear each one of these positions out that I already have up in the air, 60. So that's a top position. So now if I close my gripper and tell it to go to position 11, I now have a position that's straight there. I can now go ahead and teach my 100 position and record my position 99 from my home. And all the rest of the positions are gonna be based off of this bottom layer. So get the bottom layer set first, 20 through 24, and then make the other eight positions relative to those. Once you have all your positions recorded, go ahead and move on to the next video which will show you how to write all the program.